Welcome to space. In this edition, we take you to the comet Churyumov Gerasimenko. The small robot Phile has found organic molecules on its surface. These molecules are considered to be fundamental elements of life. We'll have more on that in a moment. But first, let's get some other news from the universe. A brand new family of European launchers is coming. ESA has signed contracts with Airbus Safran launchers, France's space agency and DLV for the development of the Ariane 6 new generation launcher and the Vega C. A team at CERN in Geneva is working with the European Space Radiation Superconducting Shield project to develop a superconducting magnet. It's to protect astronauts from cosmic radiation during deep space missions. Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield, known for his space performance of David Bowie's song Space Oddity, is to release an album in October. All of the tracks were produced while he was an International Space Station commander. The Rosetta mission has changed our vision of comets and given a new outlook on the origin of life in the universe. Let's see how. The sunlight shines into my eyes and I feel so alive. The ESA teams involved in the Rosetta mission are now preparing for the last part of its amazing journey. Comet Churyumov Gerasimenko, or 67P, has recently reached the perihelion. That's the closest point to the Sun in its six and a half year orbit. It's an important scientific step as increasing solar energy warms the comet's frozen ices, turning them into gas and dust. To stay safe, Rosetta has been forced to move further from the comet. When the comet becomes more quiet, when there is less uh, dust in the coma, this also means that the orbiter can go closer to the nucleus again, and this will enhance our chances to rebuild communications with the lander. The robot Phile, which landed on the comet nine months ago, called Earth for the last time via its mothership Rosetta on the 9th of July. Of course, we dream of really re-establishing uh, contact and receiving data, science data, from the surface again. For instance, images, images that would show us the difference in the terrain from November to now after perihelion. The team in charge of communications and sending commands to Phile is based here at the Lander Control Center in Cologne. We've had rare access. The team is trying to keep its chin up, remaining optimistic that there could be another signal from the robot. There are new windows of opportunity coming up until late September. During these periods, which last around one and a half to two hours, twice a day, we try to send commands to the lander to re-establish contact. If Phile is able to pick up a signal and fire in its instruments, it will be a last chance for the lander to conduct some important tests. Along with the scientific community, we have prepared a series of sequences to be carried out once contact is restored. We'll also attempt more complex sequences, like trying to drill, if that's possible. The Rosetta mission has been extended by nine months until September next year. It's hoped this will further boost the enormous amount of data that's already been collected. But time is of the essence. In the coming months, the comets will move further from the sun. Light will decrease, meaning Rosetta and Philae's batteries can't be recharged. If we're limiting only to try and listen for Philae, we lose so much of the science of the, of the orbiter's mission. We need to balance everything, listening for the lander, but also doing the science that is unique now. We can't go back and do it again. We have to be in the right place at the right time to make these observations. The analysis conducted by Philae during its descent to Churi suggested that comets might be key to building the ingredients of life.
we found a variety of organic uh, molecules, of organic chemistry, which now needs to be embedded in our theories of the formation of life, on how could sugars, how could amino acids uh, be formed on the earth when these organic material, prebiotic uh, molecules can buy comets to the earth. Yes, we, we've got organic material and these are, and it's important to highlight this and, and really state that these are building blocks. These are not living organisms. These are the things that go on or can go on to create life. The ESA team that got Rosetta to its rendezvous point with the comet a year ago has already decided how to end the orbiter's mission. The mothership will somehow join its beloved lander. For the last weeks of the mission, we intend to do a spiraling down towards the surface of the comet. So we expect, we expect to be able to fly at very close distances, well below 10 kilometers. Most likely we'll be able to take spectacular images from very close distances. And at the end, we will let the spacecraft deposit or land, if you want, or crash on the surface of the comet. A year after Rosetta joined the orbit of Chiri, and nine months after Philae landed on it, this mission has deepened knowledge and boosted the hunger for space exploration. It's a very, very emotional aspect also uh, to see the results of 20 years of work as they come to Earth by radio signal from the mother. Uh, ship from Rosetta. For me, even though we've we've been there for this long, I'm still waiting for, for the end of the mission because that, that for me is the whole point of why we're there, is to see this entire evolution. Rosetta has been one of the most fantastic space missions ever. From a scientific point of view, we've been exploring a world which was totally unexplored. We have seen that this mission has brought a lot of attention all over the world, has raised a lot of emotions, and this is something will remain forever in our hearts. E ora, appuntamento time now for Astronauts, Astronauts Academy. Academy. This time we're looking at how space can affect the health of astronauts. Degli astronauti. Hello, my name is Volker Dahmann. I'm head of the uh, Space Medicine Office. Uh, just come in with me into the control room where we are monitoring the astronaut health. The uh, immediate post-flight program takes roughly 21 days, three weeks. That is a very heavily scheduled time uh, where medicine has the priority over everything else. Weightlessness looks very great and is fun, uh, but of course uh, there is no up and down. Uh, the heart muscle does not need to pump uh, the blood upwards towards the brain. Uh, so like every muscle in our body, the heart muscle also degrades uh, because it, it's not stressed that much anymore. You have to relearn again when you come back to Earth what you have reprogrammed uh, your brain in weightlessness and you have to reprogram it when you're coming back. That's all from this edition of Space. Next month we'll be looking at how satellites are being used in maritime surveillance and safety. Thanks for watching. See you then.